Hey guys, gonna do a comparison here between two different night vision monoculars, the PVS-14 and the NVM-14. So this one on the right here is a PVS-14. This is the standard uh, US military style night vision monocular. This is a NVM-14, it's made by ATN Corp. And it's one of a couple different types of PVS-14 monocular alternatives. Another one you might have seen is the AGM Wolf 14. I believe that's essentially a Russian version of the NVM-14. It has a couple of minor differences, but to my eye, the housing looks very similar. Most of the comparison here is going to be between the housings, not between the performance of the devices, because the NVM-14 here has got a salvaged, harder digital Generation 3 intensifier tube. Most of the NVM-14s and AGM Wolf-14s you can find for sale online have Generation 2 Plus intensifier tubes. You see a lot of European-made night vision that has Generation 2 Plus tubes, and those are basically extremely high-spec Generation 2 tubes that are meant to compete with Generation 3 tubes. In a lot of other countries, you cannot get your hands on Generation 3 night vision. I think it's not even legal to let a foreign national look through a Generation 3 tube. So the reason you may want to buy an NVM-14 instead of a PVS-14 is that they're cheap. You can get these brand new online for about 1500 bucks, although that's probably going to have a Generation 2 Plus tube, not a Generation 3, and it's also probably going to be sort of a blemished tube. Again, this one's a bit of a Frankenstein because it's got a salvaged Gen 3 tube in it. However, we can still make comparisons between the housings. The first obvious difference between the two different housings is that the NVM is a little bit more compact than the PVS-14. Uh, however, they weigh almost exactly the same. This NVM weighs less than half an ounce less than the PVS-14 does. The size difference is also reflected in the different size of the lenses. You can see the PVS-14 has got much bigger lenses. I'm not entirely sure that that changes the quality of the image per se, although it definitely feels noticeable when you hold it up to your eye. I think these have similar or identical field of vision ratings, but the PVS-14 is just easier to look through. Another difference is that the PVS-14's focus ring has a very limited amount of travel. You basically turn it from all the way in to all the way out, and it locks in both positions. The NVM, on the other hand, just sort of spins and spins until it reaches an extreme amount of travel, and you can find multiple focal points in this range. So it's a little bit harder to nail the focus far away with the NVM. The NVM has the battery compartment facing the rear, and it has the on-off switch facing the front, which is the inverse of the PVS-14. This uses CR123 batteries, whereas the PVS-14 uses AA batteries. CR123s are a 3-volt battery, not a 1.5-volt battery, so I'm really not entirely sure why this needs all that extra juice. The power switch on the NVM is also a little bit different. You push it in and rotate to one direction in order to turn it on push it in, rotate the other direction to turn it on with IR Illuminator, as opposed to the PVS where you rotate one click for on, and then pull out and rotate again past the detent to turn it on to IR Illuminator. As far as the performance goes, it's really not fair to compare this specific NVM versus whichever NVMs you can buy on the market, because again, this doesn't have the original intensifier tube that is often sold with these devices. So if there's enough interest, I may try to track down one of the really cheap low-end NVM-14s or uh, AGM Wolf-14s and do a comparison of that to see how the Gen 2 Plus European spec tube stacks up against a pretty decent Gen 3 tube that's in that PVS-14. The real problem with the NVM-14 is not necessarily going to be the performance of the tubes, although that may be a limiting factor. The real issue with these is that the mounting interface is really strange. So the PVS-14 uses the standard tripod hole, which is compatible with basically all of the mounting interfaces on the market from the cheap and cheerful USGIJ arm all the way up to some of the fancy Wilcox stuff. You could spend like 800 bucks on the mounting interfaces for these. As far as the MVM goes, it has this side rail attachment interface, and there's one of those on each side of the device. It's really difficult to find accessories that work with this specific mounting interface. One option is the JDAP plate. This basically just slides on to the side rail. It's put in place with a set screw, and then this gives you a tripod mounting hole that you can use this with a standard J-arm, hence the name J-DAPT. This works reasonably well. It's really not ideal, but it's probably the best way to use one of these, and I think that's how most people that have NVMs are choosing to run them, is on J-DAPT plates. A company called Mod Armory makes swing arms that are specifically designed for this side rail attachment. It works with NVM-14s, it works with other monoculars like the FLIR uh, Breach series of thermals, also works with, I think, the MUM-14, a couple of those other designs. 
This one has the rail shoe on one end with a small set screw, basically slides on and then it's held in place with a single set screw. This is a friction design, so these two hinges can be tightened or loosened just with these screws. And basically you just crank it into the position that you want and it's held in place with friction. That's very stable, it's a very good design. You can also reverse the shoe and this little arm right here uh, in order to move the night vision device in and out to find a more comfortable eye position. So that makes it a little bit more compatible with a broader variety of monoculars. This is the version with the USGI style bayonet mount. You can also get these with a newer dovetail mount that's compatible with all the Gucci Wilcox stuff. I got this one with the bayonet mount because it's compatible with the Rhino 2 mounts that I already have. It does have quite a bit of wobble, unfortunately, which makes it kind of difficult to use. And this is actually basically a brand new out of the box Rhino 2. I had an old surplus one that was kind of well used and it was even worse. So even after shimming this thing with some electrical tape, it still is not as stable as I would like. So it does tend to sort of flop around when you look up and down. So I really cannot recommend the Mod Armory swing arm. It just doesn't work particularly well. I can hesitantly recommend that you use a USGI J arm in the JDAPT plate. It's not ideal, but it is functional if you are stuck with one of these, although still you'd probably be better off with a PVS-14. In theory, there is a J arm alternative specifically designed to use with these dovetail shoe mounts. However, I don't know if it actually exists or not. I've seen it for sale on several different websites and I've ordered it, I think from three different websites and it's just total radio silence. So either the websites are bullshit or they don't actually have these in stock. Maybe they don't exist anymore. Maybe they never existed. I'm not entirely sure. If I ever get one, I'd like to try it out, see if it works as well as a J-arm. In the meantime, you're stuck with either using the JDAPT plate or fighting through the wobble on one of these mod armory swing arms. So can you make one of these work for you? And if so, is it worth it trying to save the money over a PVS-14? That's kind of hard to say. I'm pretty sure that the Gen 2 Plus intensifier tubes that are in most of these you could buy online are not gonna perform particularly well in low light situations. More concerning to me is the lack of support for the interfaces. You either have to use the JDAP, which is a bit of a kludge, you have to use that Mod Armory swing arm, which is kind of a piece of garbage, or you have to try to track down the original swing arm for this style of mount, and I don't know if they even still exist. Those are the main obstacles that stand between me and recommending the NVM14 or the Wolf AGM14 or any of those other similar devices that have that side rail mount. That being said, you can still totally use these. I've walked around in the woods with it on, I've shot with it on, it does work pretty well. There's no question that the NVM14 and Wolf AGM14 are better than any of the digital night vision offerings and better than any Gen 1 night vision offerings. I would say that they're probably also significantly better than biocular night vision like the PVS7. If you are interested in the performance characteristics of the two intensifier tubes in these devices, I will say the PVS14 performs significantly better. The tube in that device is much newer, it has less blemishes, it has better performance in low light, it also has higher resolution. Let me know if you want me to pick up one of the AGM Wolf 14s so I can do a real comparison video of Gen 2 Plus Euro stuff versus American Gen 3. What's another $1,500 between friends? All right, thanks for watching. See you later.